Franco Salisi, I am running for councilman of Ward 3. This is my first time running in uh, political, uh, for, it's my first political endeavor. Um, I am motivated by the, by the sediment, the public sediment that uh, the general population of Burlington has, um, has been, has been expressing their opinions to me. I've, uh, 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 my constituents in Ward 3, um, they express a lot of concerns of the direction politics are moving in Burlington, um, both uh, the financially with expenditures and also, uh, and also the, the trend in ideology that is being m moved along. Um, I'm running as an independent um, for reasons B, that the progressive party and the conservative parties both have great ideas, only they aren't exactly with the sentiment of the people on all things. Uh, the Progressive Party has great aspects as along with the conservative base. So uh, I myself running, I'm trying to enter the political realm with a mindset that is cut from a different cloth that has normally been seen. Um, I have experience in the private sector. I've been working in uh, the restaurant business for over 15 years where my family has started at a small business with three employees and we've grown to a large corporation at one point with over 100 employees. So I've seen the aspects of the small, and medium, and large business at the, Vermont, at the local Vermont level. Uh, I've, been, uh, I've, been, I've been, because of this, I've been lucky to be immersed in the local populations where I've uh, been able to make relationships with um, voters and also small businesses and their business owners. Uh, as far as my background, I'm an alumni of University of Vermont, graduated in 2009 with a degree, Bachelor's of Science in Mathematics with backgrounds in Engineering, Sociology, and Nursing. Um, and and um, my hopes and endeavors is to create some kind of closer connection between the population and the pol politics th that are being done in Burlington. Also to create a symbiotic relationship between the private and public sectors for me and my constituents feel like there has been a disconnect over the, over the past few years and election cycles. Great. Thank you very much, Franco. And for all of our candidates, I'll give you folks a little tap here. We've got about 30 seconds left to let you know. Thanks Great. for the question. Thank you very much, Franco. It's a, it's a very good question by the caller, so I must commend him on that. Uh, the root of the problem, where at least in, in, in current politics with our previous administration, well, soon to be previous administration, was that of executive sessions. Now, executive sessions are sessions for which are the only public meeting amongst pub public servants, which is up to the discrepancy, a political discrepancy, of whether it is recorded or not. Now, the problem with the previous administration, he had a lot of pull with the use of executive sessions. If we, my ideology, and the, what I'm gonna be bringing to city council is the mindset where executive sessions is public domain under the condition that public funds are being discussed. If it's public money, it's public business. So it must be a priority to provide that information to the public to create an informed population base where you can have an enriched democracy. Now, there are situations where executive sessions are not up to public form. This mostly should be reserved for when disciplinary action is put on a city employee, where personal business is discussed, but it is not up to, it's not the public's business. So yes, there are situations where it should not be public business, but there's a lot of times where it should be. Great, thank you. Sean. <coughs> Three counts. Thank you much, Ben, for your call. All right, Franco, you're running as an independent. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and start with you this time. Okay. Uh, between the Progressive Party and the Democratic Party, uh, they both have many parallels, uh, unlike the Conservative Party, where there's a little bit more conflict. But there are a few things that differentiate the two. Uh, the Democratic Party uh, s seeks um, the middle class and the upper class as their constituents, as long as the, uh, as long as the uh, lower class. The Progressive Party wants to portray a, a progressive um, agenda, which, which promotes um, uh, increase public service and increase and uh, increase in uh, uh, increase public service and 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 uh, and entitlements for uh, 
for the general population. The Democratic is also, but they have more parallels to the Republican Party than the Progressive Party does. Um, as far as uh, 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 geopolitical, national, and state level politics, you're going to find more parallels between the Democratic Party and the Republican Party than the Progressive. Uh, the Progressive Party does have some uh, more social uh, conscientious than the Democratic Party. Uh, they're also a little bit more, um, I hate to say liberal, or um, uh, uh, than the Democratic and Republican Party. But at the same time, the, I don't want to, I didn't want to say anything critical of any party today, but uh, I found, at least with the past administration, the leadership they bring to the table doesn't have the, the leadership to put forth their agenda, which, they, which uh, our previous administration has shown. Uh, if anything, uh, he's alienated himself from the party uh, because he cannot succumb to the political pressures of the position he takes. All right, Franco, thank you. Sean, you're running as a Democrat, according to my notes here. Uh, our caller, Ben, big. So, I believe in that. Thanks. Thank you. Franco, we'll end with you. Uh, yes, uh, diversity in Burlington. It is the most diverse city in the state of Vermont. And uh, we have the most diverse school in the Vermont, Burlington High School. <clears throat> I, I work for Burlington High School. Um, and uh, in, in partnership with Burlington High School, I work for the nonprofit uh, Shades of Ebony, which is a supplemental educational program that provides educational support for the diversity of Burlington. Uh, we have programs that, uh, that supplement refugees from Kenya, uh, um, uh, Kenya, uh, Rwanda, um, and uh, other uh, war-torn areas w which they're relocated to Burlington, Vermont, and they run through our school systems. Uh, we, also, we also deal with the diversity of uh, class and socioeconomics. Uh, for those of low income, uh, we provide services as well. Um, be, be it as I am, as a city councilman, I would have a close relationship with those voices that want to be heard. Uh, if not, if it's not my personal business to do it on the job site, it's, it's just with casual conversation. I'm in contact with both the students and the parents on a regular basis. So I'd be able to provide representation for the diversity of Burlington and, uh, and along with uh, the majority of my constituents. Great. Thank you very much. All right, callers, thank you again for your patience. Caller, you are on the line with us. Could you please state your name? Yeah, hi. My name is Beth. Okay. Jobs. Yes, jobs are very important, very important to have for the economy of Burlington. Now, in order to create jobs and, and sustain jobs, uh, we're going we need to have business. Uh, we do have a, a migration of young people that move out of, of the state, but fortunately enough, anyone moves out of the state, they get a dose of reality and they end up moving back. Luckily, that demographic is usually like 30 year olds. They got all their training out of state, now they're bringing it back to Burlington. Uh, the entrepreneurship of Burlington is what uh, would condition, or would, uh, is what uh, uh, insulates us from a lot of the negative business cycles that go on with the rest of the world, the rest of the country. Hence our low unemployment rate, not as low as it should be, not statistically sound as it should be, but it's, it's still low comparatively. Uh, my, my ideology, and my, set, my mindset, and my constituents demand f freedom for business creation. This means an environment that enriches and provides a rich soil for business to grow. This is low taxes and low bureaucratic process in order to get business moving. That, along with uh, social programs that could provide the information to, for uh, young individuals and entrepreneurs to get the support and information they need to start a business. Thank you. Sean. Yeah, I think it's a, I think it's a great question and a really critical one. Um, oh, but we can do it. Thank you. Franco. Burlington Telecom, a city-owned public telecommunication company. City-owned, public. It is a jewel in the Queen City's crown. There are only a handful of such situations in this country, let alone the world. It is a very, very, very important asset we have. Not only does it provide a check on the <coughs> private sector, the telecommunication, where, which, which, we're, which we're, we're coming into an oligarchy situation with the number of people that provide internet and cable, but also it is, is under the, the standards of government restriction and, and checks and balances. Um, selling assets is not something my constituents like to do. We want to keep our publicly owned telecommunication for the importance 
of it. Uh, um, a lot of people say it's losing money, but it is a publicly owned asset. It should be looked as a publicly provided service. All right. Thank you very much. Sean. Sure. Uh, on the issue of Burlington Telecom, I also think it's really unfortunate that it wasn't making it. You hear Frank go. Um, transparency is essential. Uh, it's, it's a given for, for democracy. Without, without the free flow of information of how public funds and decisions at the executive level are being made, it, will, it does not provide <coughs> the voter the information to make sound decisions on how government's being run. Um, it, uh, I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to take a very firm stance on the exec executive session, so they're always under the scrutiny of being recorded and documented. I'm going to make sure uh, there's an overhaul of our records, so, or I'm going to be put forth the ideas and the mindset of creating a digital, uh, digital records where all of our budgets and all of our um, uh, documentation of meetings and, and city, call, uh, city board met, uh, agendas are made available on the internet. Uh, there, there, are, uh, there is information available on the internet right now, but it's not comprehensive. Uh, one of our priorities would be to make it comprehensive so not only they can see what politics and the numbers look like in a contemporary sense, but over a long historical sense as well. Thank you, Franco. Sean? Sure. Now on the, on the issue. Mm. Uh, be, it, be it as a councilman, I would make it my priority and duty to inform the public um, and to be as objective as possible. The city councilman's role uh, in regards to the city budget is to present it to the pop population in form and to show where funds are being laid out so the voter can make a sound and informed decision and choice on whether or not to adopt a budget or not. The school board has the power to amend and create budgets, and only the voter has the power to support and accept <coughs> it. Now, to entertain the notion, as a, as a voter myself, uh, looking, at, looking at this 10.88% uh, increase, which does have some uh, makeup uh, 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 ends that we had to do, be it the federal cuts and whatnot, but there has to be a relationship between the public and private sector. Uh, be it, be, it, be it I a property owner and a city employee uh, for the school district, I received a 3% raise this year. Um, uh, a, a raise in that magnitude would be more palpable than one of double digits. Even though we're making up for lost funds, we need to weather the storm with budget adjustments and we need to tighten when we tighten, not to lose that relationship between the public and private sector. Great. Thank you very much. And we are coming up, we've only got a Franco. Thank you for having me, uh, and I appreciate getting the coverage I, you're providing right here, and I'd like to get out to my constituents as well. Thank you for supporting me so far. Um, I, feel, I feel like I'll be an asset to Burlington and a, a straightforward, a tireless voice for the Burlington people, especially that of Ward 3. Uh, I'm, I'm looking to take a serious look at the problems at hand and to correct them regardless of the political pressures that are put on. I, I'm going to take a very st firm, pr firm position against the transparency in Burlington, also the creation of an environment that can create jobs and create business and, and, and remove all the stifling effects that run, ag run against a stream as far as the economy. Um, I'm going to take a firm position on the uprising homelessness, homelessness problem, um, the uh, funding shortfalls for COTS and other social programs we're seeing is going to be looked at, and we're also going to look at cuts in areas that aren't as necessary and as immediately, that should be immediately prioritized, that are being prioritized today. So I hope, vote for me, I, Franco Salisi, War 3, and uh, we can start making things move in a better direction. All right, thank you. Sean.